I got one log. I mean, this is within uh, three years of each other, 1995 to 1996, and this one. Total ducks, 266. Look, 1998, three years later, total amount of ducks, 1,200. 1,200 on this one. You're like, same spot, same spots. Same duck blinds, same duck blinds. You said, you said what was the difference? Water, the water level. Water level was 20 feet high right here. You <laughs> say, what are you gonna do? Quit duck hunting because you got a high water? The only one thing to do, throw you some decoys out and give them a whirl. So we were fortunate to get 266 that year. He, so, mentioned, he mentioned pool stage a while ago, 21-2. Okay, that year, okay. Put another 20 feet of water. Yep. 19, what it was, 95? Yep. We, we was knee deep, hunting under the trees. Okay. 1999, okay, you know, was knee deep, okay. 95, it was 20 feet deeper. Yep. So instead of under the trees, we was in the top of the trees in a blind, blind float. Feeding depth, and then, hey, then submarine depth. <laughs> 2018, that's not too long ago. One of our worst duck seasons. River, seven feet below pool stage. Some kind of locking down problem. They drained it way down, dried up a lot of it that year, the Corps of Engineers. So you just had to go with it. Here's one, 1999. 1,345 ducks. It's a drought going in. Dry, dry Mississippi Delta. Nearly everything dried up. Well, that's like this year. It's 1999. We, we, we jumped up here now. What is it? 2000 what? 23. 2023. <clears throat> 23, 24 years later. Uh, dry year may be the ticket, I wrote. <laughs> and it we killed 1,345. He's like, y'all got them. Approximately 600 mallards back in 1999. You know, we don't see that many mallards like that anymore. In the last few years, it's, it's if you looked at the, all the books, all the books, it just dropping, it's just dropping a little lower and a little lower, especially when it comes to mallards. I'm not quite sure. They don't, they don't, they don't migrate. We hunted in a, in a cypress tree, and I'm the one that looked at it, and I, there was two or three old boards up there in that thing, and it's on the edge of the little lake, Moss Lake. I looked at that, and I said, boys, we, we'd get out there on one of them old big blinds, you know, in the button willows. I told them, I said, I said, I know small sea ducks lie that down there in front of that cypress tree. Y'all notice that? They said, they said, well, we didn't think about it. I said, we need to put us a duck blind in that cypress tree, get up above them. So we got about, oh. About 14 feet. Yeah, 15, yeah, yeah 14, four, right 15, 15, 14 feet, 15 feet. And we built us a duck blind, put a ladder on it. We'd go out there with the duck hunters. They'd get in the blind, take that boat outboard, go hide it, get back in the P-Rogue, and paddle back out there, tie, tie it on, take your foot, and just sink it right there below that tree. <laughs> right on the it, tree. It's just sitting there, you know, but it's underwater, so they couldn't see the tips a little bit. We got up in that thing, and I mean, the action started. So before the smoke cleared, <clears throat> the guy who said, you said, how did Duck Commander come out of all that? It was just duck hunting every time, you know, just we duck hunted all the time. So the, 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 the duck commander came out. I happened to call in a bunch of, they were about 75 mallard. They, they, they went around that tree and went around that tree. And about that third or fourth run, they just right down in the decoys. Well, we're sitting up in that tree. We got up and I mean, the bloodletting was, 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 was there. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Well, they, I went down, went after the cripples, 
We didn't have a dog, anything like that. And Big Al Bolin, who's in the movie portraying Big Al, and uh, that actor playing Big Al, Big Al, I don't think it's in the movie, but he's the one who said, Robinson, I got a, got a, got a little story for you. So I got up in there and I sat down there, you know, we all popped us a beer or whatever, you know, getting, we were getting drunk in the process. That's when we was all getting drunk. He said, you need to build duck calls. Like you've got that and souped up in your hand there. You got to one of them old duck calls from somewhere or another and got it all with the reeds all cocked up like that. He said, you need to be, put that thing on the market. He said, you just called in 75 miles and they just, every time you get that duck call on them, we, we kill them. I said, well, I hadn't thought about that. I said, what are we going to call it? He said, I got the name for it. I said, what are you going to call it? He said, the Duck Commander. I said, Duck Commander. I said, I said one of these days I may do that, Bolo. Well, never did I realize that would come within four or five years. Yeah, he told him, he said, hey, you, didn't just, you didn't just call them ducks. He said, you commanded them ducks in here. Yeah. So my duck call was named by Big Al. Big Al uh, was close to being a drunkard. And, uh, oh, I guess, he was an alcoholic all the uh, way. Yeah. So he was heavy into the alcohol. Well, when I repented, a few years goes by, I repent, turn to God, begin to hide out down on the river so all them old boys couldn't run me down, you know. But they found me anyway, and old Big Al was with them. They came down there, you know, and uh, I ran them off. Yeah, you. that's when you said that's the best thing you've ever told your younger brother because I had come in from leave from the Army, and them boys showed up and said, hey, let's go chase the women and get drunk. And he looked at them, and he said, boys, hey, that old boy's dead. He said, he's dead, and I buried him in good riddance. Yeah, they were looking at each other like... And it scared, it scared out both. However, 12 years went by. They tried to get me to go drunk, get drunk with them. I had repented. So now, Moss Lake is fading away because the government bought it. And the first thing they did was torch that... 500 year old cypress, maybe a thousand years old. Yeah. They burnt that duck blind in that big old bull cypress, so burn it down to the ground. Somebody told me about it and I went up there and I looked at it, I pulled over there and I said, boy, what a loss. I said, a lot of members there, birthplace of duck commander. That's when I repented and turned to God, all that was happening. You say, boy, so Big Al, the day he wanted me to go get drunk with him, and I ran him off, 12 years goes by, and the phone rings one day. Yeah. He said, I need to talk to you. I said, I'll be there. So I drive up there. I knew what he wanted. You know, you work with people. He'd watched me for 12 years. He said, Robinson won't get drunk with us anymore. He didn't even use a cuss word, not one. That dude. So Big Al wanted to know why, because he said, I've been, I'm an atheist. I, I, I'm an atheist since I got out of college. I said, well, I said, one thing's for sure, we're all going to die. You agree? He said, that's why I called you. The doctor just told me I had an aneurysm near my heart that could explode at any moment. So they told me I had to lose some weight and they're gonna go in there and do open heart surgery. I said, well, just remember this in case it comes in a hurry. I told them that God became flesh, Jesus died on a cross, resurrected in three days. I said, life beyond beyond this you can live forever here or you lose forever 
take it or leave it. He said, that's how you, you, you went to this Jesus. That's the reason you quit all that. I said, that's the reason I quit. I said, I never could have converted one of y'all if I'd have just kept getting drunk with you. I said, I had to clean my mouth up. Therefore, if you want me to baptize you, I will. So we went down on the riverbank. I baptized him. We rode around and talked a couple of days. Two months later, he's standing on third base. He was a baseball coach. <laughs> he hit the ground. Waited 12 years before he heard the gospel from me from the time he was baptized, about two months. And then he asked me to do his funeral. I didn't know all that that was going on. He said, when I die, tell old Robinson to do my funeral. And I told his family, I said, I said, I don't even own a suit. I said, you know, preachers, you know, they come to them, they all decked up their way all the time. They said, don't worry about it, just come on. He asked, what he asked us to tell you to come on if he died early. I said, I'll be there. Well, I got there. I preached the gospel to all of them that were there. There is life beyond the grave. Resurrection. By the way, all you duck hunters out there, don't kid yourself. I wouldn't say a word about Jesus, but the only thing he did for me to raise me from <laughs> Guarantee I could be raised from the dead. I said, I never heard that one before. I'm going to research it, and if it turns out to come true, I said, I got in. Therefore, I've been following Jesus ever since. So, all your sins removed, you'll be resurrected. So now we look at old age as saying it's a gain, not a loss. We just go to sleep. Resurrection day is coming. This whole thing is going to be wiped clean. But the saved are be still standing. One thing happens. Change of address. Say so what outside? Huh? One thing happens. Change of address. I think, it's pretty, I think it's pretty good, pretty good so deal. So if they curse us, Bible thumpers and all that, I'm like, <laughs> it's a way to get out of here alive. You got a better story? It's because you say it, I'm Bible thumping you all bad about me. I said, do you have a better story when death comes? Because it's coming, right? I just and got all back. of them are sitting there and you say, do you have a better story? And they say, I, I just, no, I just don't got, believe it. I the said, I next, do. The reason they're scratching their head, they ain't got a better story. I just about got back from Hawaii. What did you learn from okay. being in Hawaii? I, I'm on Kona, the island of Kona. Okay, it's four square, four thousand square miles. That is change it, make it where it's understandable. That's two point five million acres of land, which is lava. It's all lava, because that came from the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, volcanoes made. Volcanoes made that island. And hey, all it is is souped up. Uh, if you crush it up and spread it out and then throw some kind of seed on it, it'll grow anything. All it is is souped up uh, fertilizer. Huh. That's what lava is. How is the grub in Hawaii? Huh? Ain't much. Not much? Yeah, ain't much meat. Beans, you know, and, they, corn, they, hey, they beans and cornbread are kept Well, I'm saying, hey, they cook up a good pig because they put him in the ground. Well, hey, that's about all they cook good. Yeah. <laughs> they cook that pork pretty good. Besides, you... Uh, you 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 were rolling around going to Alaska. You done you done you're running with the big wigs now. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hey, I I ain't went deep sea fishing and we had one big three hundred pound marlin out there tail walking for about a minute. That was pretty. And then the guy reeled in what they call a spearfish, he's about seven foot long and it's kind of a rare marlin. He's a little smaller marlin, is all he is. Y'all turn him loose. Uh no. We filleted that sucker and fried him up. Huh. <laughs> Hard to let him go when he's out. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's what you out there for. It's, it's, hey, we, we are supplementing the grocery list. So here, now I'm, I'm three years uh, shy of 80. So how close are you to 80? Uh, I got five years. I'm shooting for 100. For 100? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to shoot for 100. You may make it. Might as well go ahead and go, ahead and go for it. 
But you got that resurrection just... I See, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, all of this changed the address. You know, don't sit there and cry and mourn over, you know, before you spread a marker. You know, all that is is just how, yeah, the old boy's passed away. By the way, I brought these when I, uh, these duck books on all of uh, what's going on on the river. Just, just think about it. Look here. Here's a couple of pages out of a out of November. We killed all the ducks but three before 7:30. We went on November 15th. We killed 40. November the 16th, 17. November the 17th, 13. November the 18th, 24. November 19th, 10. 32 on the 20th. Three on 21. Look out. 20, 22nd. November 22nd. 42. 18 teal, seven gadwalls, seven woodies, six ringnecks, two mallards, one shoveler, and one widget. The only band I don't, I don't own. The only one that's not on there. <laughs> it's that old, it's that old stinky duck. What's he called? What's a blue winged teal? Not a blue winged teal. <clears throat> an old shoveler. Oh, shoveler. An old shoveler. I tried oh, to eat old, it. Old, old Mick Jagger. Yeah. <laughs> Times got hard and I tried to eat them one time, but I just didn't have enough garlic to put on them to, to eat them. I said, boy, these things. I don't have a band of a, of a I've never heard of it. Hey, John and Wink Martin, have you ever heard that uh, coming off of a, uh, shovel? Shovel. a do shovel? Do they yeah, band the shovel? shovel? They band a few of them? Yeah. So you've seen it? Yeah, a guy next to us last year killed one. Huh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, like here, six mallards, 14 teal, five gadwall, two woodies, one widgeon, one shoveler. The 24th, 17 ducks. 25th, 21. In other words, what I'm saying is the numbers just held up. They just, the numbers, they just held up. So, uh, it's amazing. So why did you start keeping it? Huh? What made you start keeping a log book of it? Because it would tell me a story. This is in September of, uh, uh, 1999. Water regime for 99, 2000. Well, I comment on how deep we either pumped it or we held it back from the backwater. I left water on hold when backwater left. It stayed until mid-July, severe drought. So we burned these ducks and had a great duck season, but it was dry. But I made sure I had, had that water, reserved that water. Dry year may be the ticket. <laughs> That's what I wrote on it. Well, I'm sitting here now, 25 years later. Good call. Yeah, but what made you? What made I, I you? I would look go? at last year's, and if last year wasn't real good, I would want to. I wanted to know why. So I began to put all these notes down, and when, when I ran into the notes, I said, "Hmm, I noticed something." But then it all makes sense, though, because you say. If there's not a whole lot of water, whatever water there is, that's fixing them. I mean. Yeah, but why did you go into such detail? You 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 went with everything. I thought it would help what me. What the weather was, what the temperature was. I thought it would help me. Mississippi Delta dry as a bone all the way up. So I looked at the Weather Channel. The real rain, no real rain, uh, in a couple of months. A lot of ducks that I'm going by here, the rice at the other Delta boys in the, they're giving me reports from the Delta. So, but it's just holding steady with us, 20, 25. So it's kind of like it is on this year. It is really, really, really dry. So we'll pump early, early. I've got our gates already down right now. The gates are down. We caught that rain the night before last. It's about an inch, you know. So they said two up here, but, but uh, 
but I'd already closed them gates. I'm closing them gates way out front. So it, it's not, but you know, it's not even September. But I mean, it's been so dry, whatever rain falls, I want to catch it because it saves a lot of money at pumping, you know. So Wendell, the farmer over there, has got my pump. By the way, he's got all that thing planted with millet and stuff, you know, big old heads on them. I mean, it's as far as you can see out there in front of us. Right next to us is a big bunch of feed, and Wendell's going to leave a lot of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's pretty good, pretty good on his. He really helped us out this year. Because a lot of ducks will go out there and they'll feed and they'll just come over to us. You know, he's going to have shallow water on it. So I saw the other day on my little recon, I saw about 15 turkeys in one bunch on our property. So they're back. They were just between Wendell's mm -hmm. and us. So so we got, we got turkeys. I ran up on 15 cows. So I talked to the people <laughs> next door and said, y'all get y'all cows off of me because you're eating all my duck food over here. Yeah, hey, get them cows out Well, we're glad you're so nice about it. I said, well, <laughs> just get them out of here. So Dan got the four-wheeler and got out there, you know, to the horses. They just got four-wheelers and rounded the cattle up. So we got the cattle there. The, the turkey's not going to hurt anything. They're roaming around. There's a couple of black bears out there messing around. Uh-oh. Uh, that ain't good. No. They'll, they'll knock their deer feeders down. Yep. And eat the deer food. But we're just sitting here right now waiting on duck season. Miles here. Lake, we actually, okay, there's a place on there that was called Bee Break. It had the biggest cypress tree in the swamp in the area. <clears throat> they they come up with a plan, I'm talking about, and it had a little hole in the buck brush right on that big cypress tree. Yep. Well, they decided, Phil and Tommy, decided, okay, we got to build a blind in there. So this thing is about, what, 70, Easy. 70, 80 feet tall? Yep. Built a, <clears throat> built a blind in the top of the tree, okay? And think about a ladder <laughs> on the side of a... The we had about five... 70 seconds. foot, one slip, and you are dead. Yeah, we like to lost so Maurice Greer building because they had built it halfway up, and they had put like three... To, Three ladders, 14 foot tall, and we bolted them and screwed them into the cypress tree. Well, we quit for dinner. And we had just set a ladder in place, but we didn't bolt it down. Well, as we got through eating, we was climbing, they was climbing up to go work on the blind again. Maurice was above, you know, Tommy was below Maurice Greer. Maurice Greer was a, a tackle, weighed about 275. Yeah, tied in. Oh, well, he's a big boy. Ball he's player a, at Louisiana Tech. Yeah, he's a big boy. He grabbed that ladder and was started coming off. He fixed the foul. Tommy just put his shoulder in his rear end and pushed. And for a minute there, he was just, you know, <laughs> it ain't nothing but cypress knees around that big cypress tree. What a, man to, lost him. What a man to do for a duck. Yeah. But anyway, that blind would hold four, would sleep four men comfortably. They had... Beds in there and everything. Big old blind, Big way old up. Look, a mallard drake could light in the decoys underneath that blind. You could be up there with a three and a half inch magnum, 12 gauge, with any kind of shots you want, and you could not kill him. That's how high he was. We did it many a time. Okay, I saw couldn't we get tried him. It. crippled. Yes, but hey, that was back in the day. We'd be up there brushing blinds, okay? The flight was on, they would start, balance, would start tornadoing, what we call it. A bunch would just go in and start circling, going down, another bunch would just, and it would be nonstop, like we stayed up there all day long. Working well, Si, you were around the whole time on when they made this movie. You've, you've been here the whole time, and you went through those years, you know, but, but I never saw you in the movie. I, they just... Well, you know, they had me in there a little bit, just a couple of things. Oh, do, do they? Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they had me in there. Yeah. No. But them was, them was, I would call, them was the uh, hard, hard years. Yeah. Okay, that was back so, in the day. So, were you glad to see when I said, I'm getting done with this drunkenness and all this filth? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, that was, that's the best thing you've ever told your younger brother, 
the disciples there the day that you told him your running buddies yep. that hey, that boy's dead and he's buried in good riddance. And life sure has been a lot better. And well, you, your your life actually changed for the better. Yeah. 